Welcome back to another video for the AP Psychology course. This is lesson number 10, looking at the left and right brain hemispheres and what their specializations are, and also looking at the endocrine system. Uh, you can go ahead and get a quick glimpse at some of the specialties and the way your brain is organized by looking at this picture, so you can feel free to pause that and take a look if you would like. Uh, there's two new pieces of uh, biological areas that are going to be introduced here in the cerebrum and so remember that the cerebrum is the center for complex thought and thinking but there are also a number of other uh, functions that are housed in the cerebrum so two things that have been found are uh, an area for dominant speech production and an area that plays a critical role in the comprehension of language and so these areas were named respectively after their finders so the first is uh, after Paul Broca and this is known as Broca's area so basically it means that a very critical area in the brain that is responsible for the production of speech is uh, known as Broca's area and so if you are someone that is actually suffering from an inability to produce speech um, whether it is uh, written or uh, spoken, then you may actually suffer from a type of aphasia also named after Paul Broca. This is called Broca's aphasia. Uh, there's a, another similar area of the brain. Now it's named after a German scientist named Carl Wernicke. And Carl Wernicke is uh, discovering the area of the brain that is responsible and very critical for the production of, uh, excuse me, for the comprehension of language. And so, uh, like Broca's area, there's also an aphasia for this. So if you have an inability to actually recognize language, whether spoken or written, then you may suffer from Wernicke's aphasia. So make sure you add these two areas to the list in terms of the parts of the brain to know, because these are definitely very important ones as well. Another area that we're interested in is uh, going to come from the split brain research that was conducted by Roger Sperry and a few other psychologists. And so in my last video, I posed a question about the corpus callosum being severed and why might people actually want to do this? Why might they want to sever the connecting point of the brain for the left and right hemispheres? What would be the function of doing that? Why would they be doing that? And so in the 1960s, there were a few uh, scientists who had posed some thoughts about the electrical activity between the brain hemispheres and how it's crisscrossing back and forth through the corpus callosum and how an overload of that activity might actually be causing people to have epileptic seizure. They looked at some research from uh, some psychologists like Roger Sperry and others who had been uh, basically severing the corpus callosum successfully in some small animals without causing them any harm and so these scientists decided to go for it on real human patients. And in the end, uh, these patients contributed quite a good bit of information to the field of psychology and our understanding of the brain, particularly in this biological context. And so a normal brain with a corpus callosum, you actually communicate a whole lot of stuff back and forth between the left and right brain hemispheres. You're able to share in this experience. And so this is uh, going to sound really foreign when you hear what is going on with these people who are basically having a corpus callosum severed and uh, they are not sharing an experience between the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere of the brain. So one demo that you can actually try on a sheet of paper if you can arm yourself with a pencil in both hands or pen, um, you're going to try to draw two different shapes, one with each hand at the same exact time. So maybe you'll try a circle with one hand and a triangle with the other hand. And because you are probably someone watching this video that does not have your corpus callosum severed, this is going to be pretty much an impossible task for you. However, if your corpus callosum is severed, you'll have no problem whatsoever drawing two completely different shapes at the same exact time with both of your hands. And so the reason you're able to do this is because your brain is not engaging in this shared experience. And so if you take a look at this picture on the left here, you'll see exactly how Roger Sperry and some other psychologists were actually able to quiz each hemisphere of the brain by themselves. And so they're going to have a patient stare at a screen, particularly at a dot in the center. And this screen is going to be having their fields of vision divided so that uh, the word heart is going to be broken into H-E and then A-R-T. 
based on their field of vision. So for example, HE would be showing up in their left field of vision, whereas ART is going to show up in their right field of vision. So they have basically two words separated by a dot, and it's just momentarily going to be flashed in front of this person. And so then they're going to be asked, what word did they see? And their response is the word art. Or if they're asked to point to the word that they saw using their left hand, they report HE. And so the reason that they're doing these things is because it is highlighting each part of the brain's dominance, whether it is uh, excelling at a visual spatial task or if it is the production of language. And so what we're going to get from this is basically an understanding of some different hemispheric specialties that your brain is going to have. And so your brain is going to suffer actually some perceptual asymmetries, meaning that there are some imbalances between the left and right hemisphere and the time in which it can process visual and auditory stuff. But what we're going to learn in terms of the specialties is that the left hemisphere of your brain actually excels a lot more with language, speech production, reading and writing, also uh, logical thinking and mathematics. Whereas the right, hem of your, right hemisphere of your brain is going to excel and be a lot more dominant with visual spatial tasks, musical tasks, and emotional expression. Now, the final point that we're going to make in this video is just quickly highlighting the endocrine system and how that basically is going to communicate with your body and your brain. And so your endocrine system is just a series of glands that will secrete chemicals throughout the bloodstream to serve uh, certain body functions. And so you can look at this diagram on the left here and see all of the components of the endocrine system, whether it's the pineal gland, the pituitary gland, thyroid, pancreas, adrenal, testes, or ovaries. So um, your gland system here, the endocrine system, it's going to release hormones. Hormones are just basic chemical substances that get released and uh, they are very different from neurotransmitters so their release is actually going to be pulsatile and hormones will travel much further throughout your body and uh, much slower than neurotransmitters which are generally just going to be released in the brain. But in order for your brain to actually have a connecting point with your body's endocrine system something is going to have to be in control. And so this connecting point in the controller of your endocrine system is actually your hypothalamus, which is your regulator of biological needs found in the brain. And so it's going to communicate to the endocrine system's master gland. That's called the pituitary gland. And the pituitary gland can either release uh, its own variety of hormones that will fan out all around the body, or they can release specific hormones that will actually stimulate other glands to release hormones. And so that's why it's pretty much called the master gland. So you're probably familiar with some of these hormones and you don't even really realize it. So you have adrenaline, that's a pretty common one. You'll have testosterone and you'll have estrogen. You also will have melatonin, but one that is maybe a little bit lesser known uh, is called oxytocin. And this is a hormone released by the pituitary gland, which actually will regulate reproductive behavior in women. And it will also be released and be linked with the fostering of trust and a sense of bonding that creates between men. So that's pretty much going to conclude this quick video. I hope that you found it useful and I hope to see you next time.